Hey everyone, so I'm here again with Shane from Migro, and if you missed our first episode, be sure to check it out because it answers the most common question I get when it comes to buying a grow light. But for today's episode, let's go over the next most common question I get, which is what are the pros and cons between the type of grow light technologies? I mean, I, I think we can skip incandescent bulbs because I don't even think they sell them anymore, but um, I've seen grow lights using fluorescent lighting, HID, of course, and then there's a ton of LEDs out there. So um, let's start with fluorescent lighting. Can you sort of go over the pros and cons of working with that type? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what, what I'm going to talk about, uh, there's a couple of parameters I suppose to talk about. So. Uh, one is the spectral or the light quality. So how good is the spectrum for plants? And um, the second would be um, in terms of efficiency. So for every watt that you put into the fixture, how much light are you getting out of that fixture? Um, in terms of spectral quality, uh, fluorescence are pretty good because you can vary, you can get different fluorescence with different um, spectrum output. And most of them have sufficient uh, blue, green, and red to generate good, healthy plant growth, balanced plant growth. So fluorescents from that point of view are, are reasonably good. Um, however, the downside with fluorescents for, for par, for, for growing, is that they're extremely inefficient compared to uh, other forms of lighting. So, and this is, goes for compact fluorescents as well. Um, they would be about 0.7 micromoles per watt um, in terms of that's the you get 0.7 micromoles output for every watt consumed by the fixture and that is about one third of the efficiency of modern LED uh, and fluorescents aren't that cheap uh, they're fragile they break in transit uh, they burn out um, fixtures are barely available these days, so I would pretty much wipe right off fluorescence straight away. There's one exception, which is if you want to supplement your uh, grow with UV light, uh, fluorescence are still the only really effective way of delivering UVB to your grow. UVB is known to enhance potency. So um, uh, I say that we do actually produce a, a, a UVB light ourselves here at Migro, and we use fluorescent technology for that reason. Uh, there is no really other viable source. So other other than um, um, for uh, for UV, uh, I wouldn't uh, recommend using fluorescent whatsoever at all. Mm hmm. Yeah, sure. So this is the sort of bulb in terms of what people know about, which is basically a, a glass bulb with a wire in it. And, um, you know, uh, electricity is pumped in, creates what's called a plasma. So it creates kind of a pool of electricity. And then inside the bulb are different elements, so bits of metal. And those bits of metal um, basically light up to emit different color spectrum. Uh, high pressure sodium has sodium in it. Uh, metal halides have metal halides, they're types of metals. They produce a uh, slightly different um, spectrum. The high pressure sodium uh, doesn't have an ideal spectral quality. It doesn't have the best light quality because it has a very low amount of blue in it. And that's why high pressure sodium looks like an orange, it looks orange, because it's got lots of yellow light and red light, which creates the orange, um, but it doesn't, have, um, it doesn't have very much blue which makes it the kind of the, the, the light appear a cooler white. Uh, because of that, it only has about 3% blue. It's not really um, sufficient for growing. And the reason is blue moderates internodal distance. So if you don't, you need about five or 6% blue in the spectrum minimum uh, in order for the plants to have short internodal distances. And that's the distances between branching on the plant. And if those distances are long, you'll have big, very long, uh, stretchy plants. If those distances are short, you'll have short, dense plants. And when we're growing indoors, we've limited height. 
So we don't want big rangy, stretchy plants. So high pressure sodium is not ideal. It's, it's, it's a relatively efficient light source in terms of um, output. So it delivers about 1.3 micromoles per watt at its best, which is you know twice what fluorescence is, but it's only about 60% uh, the efficiency of modern LED. So although you can get large wattage fixtures quite cheaply in high pressure sodium, uh, I wouldn't recommend them. You also then have a variant of that called metal halide. Metal halide has a lot of blue in it, about 23%. So it develops nice short plant growth, but it's less efficient than high pressure sodium. It only emits about 0.9 micromoles per watt. So again, I'd write it off for that reason. If you are going to use HID, there's a modern variant of it called ceramic metal halide, and that is as, uh, 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 the same efficiency as high pressure sodium, so the most efficient HID, but also has a more balanced spectrum with about um, 10 or 12 percent um, blue, depending on the, the, the color temperature of the bulb. And they are, uh, as I said, so yes, yeah, so they're efficient and have a reasonably good light quality. However, with um, modern LEDs, your high pressure, your um, ceramic metal halide, um, the relatively cheaper cost up front will be outweighed by the electricity cost uh, within about a year and a half now, less than two years, certainly. So if you buy LEDs and you run them for two years, uh, the, the cost of the fixture plus the electricity consumed is less than with um, ceramic metal halide. So they've kind of surpassed, LEDs have kind of surpassed all other technologies now in terms of, uh, I wouldn't really be recommending them unless, um, as I said to you before, unless they're, they're somebody is only growing intermittently, uh, they're not using them for very long or they're using them for supplementary in a greenhouse or something like that. There's still room for them for that point of view. But uh, if you're going to be growing at home uh, consistently, LEDs is, is really the best choice now. And between the LED technologies, I know that the blue and red LED lights are really heavily saturating the market. There's also sort of the chip on board, the cob lights that intensifies, I guess, all the diodes into one wafer. And then I know the, the the new kid on the block, the quantum boards with the full spectrum. Can you sort of differentiate the differences between those? Yeah, so um, the blue and red LEDs uh, came out about seven or eight years ago, and they were blue and red because they didn't really have quite good white LEDs yet, good efficient white LEDs. And uh, so they used blue and red mixed together to um, blue basically to keep the plant distance short, the plant the plant height short, and red was the most efficient in terms of outputting the most photons or power light per watt. So they put those two things together to uh, to make grow lights, and they were the best technology around at the time. But they had a good they 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 are. Uh, they were surpassed in terms of efficiency by white LEDs about three or four years ago, and also the um, you know people um, certainly myself anyway don't particularly like looking at them. Um, they don't like the appearance of plants under purple lights. Uh, you you know they're not emitting any green, and plants are green, so you want to be able to see what you're growing. And so um, white light is really uh, the blue and red LEDs have been surpassed. I haven't seen any new lights coming out with that technology for well over a year. Any of the manufacturers that were making them have are, are bringing out white lights now, uh, sometimes supplemented with little red LEDs, again, just to enhance the efficiency, the system efficiency. Um, but uh, yeah, they're kind of gone, gone now. So I wouldn't recommend them. I would recommend white LED lights. And what about the difference between the, I know chip on board was introduced a couple of years ago and the quantum board? Yeah, so I used to sell chip on board lights and um, cob lights. And um, there are certain advantages. So because they're small and compact, um, you could uh, put them under a lens, a glass lens, and you could direct the light uh, in a very focused way. Um, and when LEDs were slightly less efficient, when I designed those lights, 
Um, that was a good way of getting a high system efficiency. However, um, in more recent times, over the last year or two, um, SND lights, um, so that's uh, just a, lots of small little LEDs um, in arrays on a board, um, sometimes in a circle, sometimes on a rectangle, sometimes on a square, often now in strips, in bar lights. Uh, those LEDs are the most efficient, and because you can spread them out physically over, over um, the grow area, it means you can spread the light also evenly over the grow area. So again, the, the, um, I would be moving away from recommending cob lights now to um, SMD lights, um, and in particular in the bar format, because it... Um, it, uh, as I said, it distributes the light evenly in an efficient way. Exactly. And I know you also have a new light out, which uses the far bar format and uh, SMD style of LEDs, correct? Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I was, um, I've, I've been reviewing lights now on, on the micro um, grow lighting channel for about four years now. And um, so I've seen a lot of grow lights. <laughs> And um, I've got used to handling them and dealing with them and measuring them and testing them. And it became fairly evident to me about you know, two years ago, a year and a half ago, that uh, grow light, uh, bar lights were really where it's at in terms of delivering the white uh, spectrum, which is, as I said, is ideal, um, delivering high efficiency and delivering good spread. And then you get some other benefits, like you get a, a relatively light fixture, so it's, it doesn't weigh too much because the, the bar format is an efficient way of, of, um, of mounting the light. And uh, the bar format also allows um, you to see down through the light onto the, land canopy, like the plant canopy, so you can see in between the bars what's going on, and uh, also allows airflow up and, up and down through the light fixture and... Uh, allows uh, heat and uh, uh, heat, to, heat to escape and air to circulate freely. So there, it's hard to, hard to, um, to think really of, of, of a better way of distributing the light. I certainly haven't seen anything um, to date that can beat that format for uh, striking, um, for hitting all those points, as, 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 uh, uh, hitting all the things you would want it to do as best as possible. Okay, well, I think we've covered pretty much everything. And um, I really want to thank you, Shane, for your time today. Um, before we close, is there anything you want to plug? Yeah, well, I just, uh, as I said a little bit, I've got the, the Migro uh, YouTube channel. It's got lots of reviews of um, best lights coming out on the market. I do lists and comparisons of those lights so that you can, uh, you can compare maybe the fixtures that you're considering against each other. Um, I do tips, uh, conversations with experts in the field. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Weekly videos out and um, uh, Instagram channel as well. So please look us up and subscribe and uh, we'll try to deliver you some really good content and help you to pick a new light if you're, that's what you're doing. Or as happens probably more than that even is... Um, advising people on how to get the best out of their current system or, or if they're doing an upgrade, uh, how to achieve maximum performance from their grow space. So uh, yeah, check it out, migrolight.com or uh, hashtag migro on uh, Instagram or YouTube. Yeah, definitely. And I'll leave a, um, the link in the description below. So again, thank you, Shane, so much for your time. And I'll talk to you again soon. A real pleasure. Thanks, Dan.